This a song for everybody. For everybody. Cause we can't do it on our own. Everybody needs somebody. So why you think I made this song? Welcome back, Culture Warriors. Today we are discussing the strong black woman narrative. If you are not a black woman, this episode is still for you. As said by Malcolm X, the most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected person in America is the black woman. And last, the most neglected person in America is the black woman. In response to this reality, naturally black women have developed a unique strength about them. From family dynamics to the work environment, their strength speaks for itself. But the question has to be asked, how does this expectation affect the mental, emotional, and even physical well-being of the black woman. Today, we will be focusing on both the positives and the negatives of the strong black woman narrative. Stay locked in and share now as we dive into this topic with my co-host and our special guest. Today, the ITM talk show family would like to welcome Vanessa Logan. As a proven leadership consultant and an entrepreneur with a heart for the people, Vanessa has a natural talent for motivation, passion for career development, and a result-driven attitude. Vanessa has a voice in the Spartanburg community as a founder of Nessa in Your Neighborhood, which embodies the principles to navigate, explore, serve, sustain, and advocate for what makes a community thrive, its people. Welcome in, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Vanessa, thank you so much for being a part of our conversation today. We're going to get right into the conversation. All right, so my first question I have is, how has this label strengthened women within the black community? Well, I, I definitely think, I'm, I've always been around strong black women, so I just think saying it out loud and more people saying it out loud, it's just, it's like a proclamation for us. It's like giving us our rightful place and being like, okay, you're a strong black woman. Um, the part that it plays on women today is, I think of my young women, my young teenagers, my young girls, the daughters that we're raising, it's letting you know, it's setting the standard. Strong black woman, that's, you know, that's the name tag. You know, I, I just feel like give them something to rise to. It almost doesn't even seem like a label. Like it's kind of, I don't know. It's like I automatically look at all black women as strong. You know what, and I would agree. But you know, we are one of the only cultures that identify our women as being strong black women. Um, I think we as women um, that happen to be black, we're determined, we're resilient, we are unyielding, uncompromising, we're authentic, and we own who we are. We truly own who we are. Let's think about some women. Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, Michelle Obama, Mary McLeod Bethune, uh, you know what, let me add one, Olivia Pope. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 Olivia Pope. That is a fictional character. However, she was um, determined and she was resilient in what she did, right? She was thrown into a jail cell to diminish her power. What did she do? She came out stronger. Yeah. So I think it's about um, being that strong black woman here in your mind and in your heart that passion of doing it. When you define strength and don't leave room for error, like and if you're saying be strong, be strong, but strength is not asking for help or strength is not getting mental health when you need it. And then yeah. when they go out and need right. that, now they feel like a failure and that right. they feel like I'm not living up to the strong black woman thing. Being strong does not mean you don't need help or you don't need someone to assist you, or you don't need a mental day. So it's how you define strength and how you, you know, other people perceive it. Right, and I think, um, I may, I feel like nobody wants to say this, I feel like the biggest contributor to that toxic narrative is other black women. And the only reason I say that is because we just, we don't give any, we don't give any room for each other to mess up. Wow. And I say that, and I feel like the biggest example is, um, even though I don't have children myself, I just look at it as, if a mother is always a mother, you, you know, you need to do something for yourself, you need self-care. As soon as you do it, it's like, you're never with your children, mm -hmm. I don't ever see you in it. So we don't give in each other 
any room to, for any error. And I think sometimes you just, you need that sisterhood to just say, it's okay to mess up. It's okay for you to, to do what it is that you want to do sometimes. Yeah, to, to always be strong is always, is, is kind of dehumanizing, I think what you're saying, because you do experience the highs and lows of emotion and you have the right to do so. But like, like Lonnie was saying, how you express that strength, because admitting I need a day um, because I'm off today or I'm, I'm going to treat myself in a particular way that you may not even approve of, but I'm going to do it regardless because it's what I need, is, is permissible and humanizing to um, a lot of women who support, like, in a lot of things that I'm involved with, you look, there's black women, I'm not going to put strong black women, but black women around me pushing things forward. So, you know, whenever I'm, the connection, those connections and I can see them, you know, losing a little power, take a day, ma'am. <laughs> Listen, to that. there's no patriarchy over here. Take a day. And to add to that, being OK with saying no. Mm -hmm. You know, when we 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 agree to doing something, we don't give a reason why we're doing it. We just say yes. But as soon as we say no, what do we feel compelled to do? Because I can't because what? That shouldn't be necessary. My no is right here a no. Doesn't mean not right now, but I have identified a no when I need to pull back and take care of myself. If I don't, I'm going to break. And if I break, I'm no good for anybody else, including myself. I don't think everybody, you know, everybody's not going to take to it, you know, and it's okay. You know, allergic reaction only affect, affects people who have the allergy. So, I like so if you don't, I mean, if you don't like a strong black woman, then don't look for a strong black woman. You know, it's, it's, it's really, you know, it's give or take. I get it all the time. I'm, you're too strong. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. Like, <laughs> like, I don't, you know, our situations in our life have, have cultivated who we are as individuals. Okay. So if I'm a little stronger than the next person, that's because I probably went through something that required more strength. The pressure was created, trust me. I, you just got to take it for what it is. And if some people in society don't, don't like it, then like I, once again, I, I live by the motto, your problem is your problem, that's your bag, so. But to the women, do y'all like being called strong black women? I would rather be considered a strong woman that happens to be black. I don't think it's necessary to say a strong black woman because that's, to me that's painting the picture there are weak women mm. and we, I don't want to come off like that. Yeah. We all have challenges and right. that's where we link up and support one another. It doesn't make me weak. Mm -hmm. It makes me, like Lonnie was saying, I need help, I need support. And sometimes we don't um, voice that. I think only time I can say that I have an issue with it um, may be in love sometimes. I say in love because, and in relationships, because sometimes, um, again, I think as women, um, the way we're naturally built, it almost like taking a lashing or, you know, seeing how much you can withstand just because you've always had this strong narrative and thinking that you're supposed to sometimes put up with or understand or accept certain things because you are a strong woman. Um, or because you feel like just because the way you are, um, you're built to withstand it. And that's the only time I think I, that I have an issue with it. Just because I'm strong doesn't mean that I need to take whatever from you or from this relationship or from another person just because I'm strong. I think we had a good conversation because that narrative um, at times can be positive, but it also has like negative connotations when it comes to living up to an expectation. Mm -hmm. And when women feel like they are not actually living up to that expectation, they feel you know discouraged or not fit or you know and that's not always the case i think it's a the matter of acknowledging you know when you are falling short but still being able to overcome at the same time mm -hmm. I would agree. but thank you vanessa for being a part of our conversation yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. and i know you have a lot of stuff going on with you so just um if you would like to promote any of it you know where they can follow you on social media and all that type of good stuff absolutely absolutely i am certainly committed to my passion and that's gonna be my community. And that's Nessa in your neighborhood. Oh, yeah. And whatever that means for you, I'm gonna meet you where you are. And certainly love the opportunity to give back, to be of service. I can be followed Facebook, 
um, Nelson Your Neighborhood, um, any other place, um, Twitter, okay. Instagram. Yes, I get with the young people where they are. <laughs> yes, yes, all of that. And the website, Nelson Your Neighborhood also. And you can find her in the neighborhood. The <laughs> Thank you so much. That is amazing. But that's it. That's all we have for you for this episode of In the Middle. Make sure you tune in next week and we have some more topics to discuss. See you then. Everybody need everybody, but ain't nobody talking about that. Plenty times I've been down and out. They reach for help just to bounce back. That's why the whole culture got my back. So I can keep my eyes to the front. And when my team picking up my slack, they don't mind cause we all one. If you depressed, then don't be too stressed to beg someone to help you out that mess. And if they beg, then be sure to try your best to make sure the stress is less. Cause nothing worse than crying out for help and nobody helps. And everybody else seem way more than happy with they self. But on the inside, it's pain is felt. Feet don't fail me now. Everybody that I grew up with, yeah, they held me down.